here's the latest batch of uh let's see if you can see that of bobbers finally got them cured up uh finally they I mean, just come off the curing bench this morning really and uh pretty imp i like this batch finally getting the uh curing process a little bit better off Let's see, get one different lengths. I prefer the longer one. That's all I ever fish with. But most people buy the shorter ones because that's just it looks like what it looks closer to what they see all the time in the stores. So people tend to want to go with something they're more familiar with and then maybe expand. But these bobbers are designed and influenced after the the British bobbers traditional bobbers as you can see some of the design patterns here that's purely aesthetic there all the thread is really meant to do is to hold on the, the eye but then you uh, put the thread wraps make it look a little better get the paint on there the real thing the real thing that makes this work is the fact that you have got this long dense stem Okay, that makes it dense, it casts, casts well in the wind because it'll shoot out like an arrow. It's pretty aerodynamic. And then when it hits the water, kind of hard to do this with the gloves on because it always wants to roll off. Um, um, it, it balances, as you, as you can see there. Um, the point is when it hits the water, it takes very little cocking weight because ideally this here is right on the balance point of the of the of the thing. There we go. See, it balances. So when it hits the water, very minimal cocking weight makes it cock up, and it always is right here. So all this is out of the water, makes it very sensitive. And so if a fish hits it from the side and it cocks a little to the side, you know he hit it from the side. If it rises out of the water you know he's hit it from the bottom and carried it up. If the wind is pushing and it's pushing like that and then it all of a sudden straightens out, you know that it's the wind pushing it and he's hitting it. If it just bobs like that, you know he hit it and took it down to the bottom real quick. It's very sensitive because of the long stem. That's what makes that work. But the th problem with just a long stick is that it, it, it doesn't float very well. And so what, the long part is the stem this is the body of, the, of it, which is just old spent wine corks. It can't be used for anything else but for uh, art things like this. Or You put that on there, and boy, it solves that problem. It makes that whole thing sit up out of the water right here on the, at the balance point. And because it's on the balance point, any movement under the water whatsoever, it will telegraph what's going on under the water. And because about half of it sticks out of the water, you can see it from a long distance. And so uh, there's the long one. The short ones do the same thing, except you just don't have as much. Again, most people buy the short ones just because that's what's most familiar to them. And I'm perfectly willing to make them and sell them. But if you're wanting to catch fish, man, get the long one. That's my personal recommendation. There's a couple of different types of... of uh, let me show you the different types of uh, corks on here. These are three different types of wine corks. As you can see them, it may not be apparent to you, but uh, when you're dealing with wine corks, you have one, just a straight up old school cork. This cork just came straight off the tree, you know, that under cork, you know, cork trees have a thick cork, uh, uh, inner sort of, inner under the surface of the bark is a thick cork like this, and that's all that is, straight up cork, straight off the tree. Real rustic looking, lots of little holes and dents and indents in it, and it's really neat. And I, and I like it for that reason. It just looks old school. It looks like something that came straight from the, you know, Middle Ages or something, right? And then there's this one called the 1 plus 1 style. If you look subtly, you'll see three layers. One here, a long middle section, and then an outer layer. 1 plus 1, that's, that's a... Uh, what they do is they take this cork here and they grind it into small blots and glue it together and then they, and compress it with the outside of straight up cork. 
and that goes to the last type which is just the agglomerated cork which is these little balls that have been put in a glue uh, they take the cork grind it up in a little cut it up in the little balls pr compress it together with glue and that's what happens and so what you have here is the straight up cork the agglomerated cork and something in between now it doesn't make any difference they all float just the same but that's just why the corks look different because there's different styles of wine corks out there but anyway just want to let you know I'll have these up on eBay by the end of the day by the hopefully by, by the time you're watching this they should already be up on eBay and if you want to give these corks a try check out the link to the eBay page place a bid or you can just actually just buy them outright and uh, and they and they uh, there's some good corks and if you want some tips and tricks on how to cast these and fish these just sh send me an email and I'll, sh I'll tell you what I do or check out the videos I have on the YouTube page all right I will talk to you guys later see ya get you some of these corks dollar uh, fifty a piece for the long ones dollar twenty five for the short ones and you pay the shipping not a bad deal custom made corks you're not gonna find that anywhere for that lower price I'm not trying to compete on price it's just that that's just how much it cost me to do them and that's about what I'm selling them for I'll talk to you guys later alright bye